He said to me, Doc, they told me to get ready. Dialysis is around the corner. That was Robert, a 60-year-old forklift supervisor with stage 4 chronic kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, and a blood pressure that liked to misbehave. His estimated glomerular filtration rate was 22. His albumin to creatinine ratio in the A3 range, which signifies severely increased microalbumin which indicates significant kidney damage and a higher risk of advanced chronic kidney disease, also called CKD, and cardiovascular complications. He'd already toured a dialysis unit, and it felt like a countdown clock had started. Stage four is an estimated glomerular filtration rate of 15 to 29. Dialysis usually come at less than 15. Then he asked me, is there anything I can do to avoid dialysis? Robert had tried the standard advice, less salt, more healthy grains, so-called healthy snack bars. But in spite of that, his sugar still spiked, his belly wouldn't budge, and his kidneys kept creeping the wrong way. He was scared and confused about the online debates about protein, meat, and keto. We sat down and reframed the mission. Most CKD in primary care is driven by metabolic insults, years of high glucose, insulin resistance, hypertension, and inflammation. If we could calm those upstream storms, especially the sugar and starch, maybe we can stop the slide. Big observational cohorts now link daily sugar, sweetened beverages with higher CKD risk. One large analysis found greater than one serving a day associated with a 19% higher risk of CKD over 10 years. It's not destiny, but it is a nudge to change the inputs. So should I cut meat, Robert asked. Here's the nuance I shared, especially at stage four. Protein dose matters. Moderate kidney guidelines advise avoiding high protein intakes if you're at risk for progression. And many recommend 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day for CKD stages three to five individualized. The big idea is the dose of protein and not to fear it. And to be quite frank, I think that's what most conventional docs are doing, living in fear. They just run away from protein altogether. But here's the problem. If we undershoot protein consumption, we risk not getting adequate protein leading to protein wasting and fragility. Overshoot and you may drive azotemia, a medical condition characterized by elevated levels of nitrogenous waste products in the blood, such as urea and creatinine, which is why so many doctors don't want to recommend any protein. But we must do better, which is why for Robert, we targeted 0.8 grams per kilogram per day of protein, verified with a dietitian on our team. Now let's talk about why carbs matter more than most people think. Most people whose CKD was caused by diabetes, the leading cause by the way, found that lowering carbohydrate to reduce glucose and insulin can improve the drivers of kidney injury. This is the most logical and impactful intervention a person with CKD caused by diabetes can do because you remove the poison. A randomized trial in diabetic kidney disease using a very low carb pattern paired with protein monitoring reported it was safe and it led to better glycemic control, weight loss, and reduction in inflammatory markers. Renal outcomes were stable, not worse. That's a green light to use carb restriction carefully in CKD rather than a red stoplight, as it relates to slightly more restrictive. And if we reduce carbs even more and try a keto or ketogenic metabolic therapy, the field is debating it. But recent nephrology reviews argue it can be safe and potentially helpful in CKD when supervised. Translation, not for everybody, but not forbidden. You must individualize. And for a motivated patient willing to align with a metabolic trained doc, this is a game changer. In the world I live in, we tend to move forward with keto with confidence because prior to using keto as a therapeutic intervention, I never saw patients reverse their kidney disease, never. We built Robert a low carb, moderate protein, higher fat pattern anchored on unprocessed animal proteins, including meat, because he needed high quality amino acids for muscle and satiety, heme iron for anemia risk, and he simply ate this way consistently. Red meat wasn't a magic kidney medicine. It was a practical tool in a diet designed to remove the toxin. Ultra processed sugar, starch, and yes, dare I say, grains. Because 40 carbs of quinoa, 
although high in fiber, will still spike your blood sugar. And what I love about animal proteins is that it doesn't cause insulin spikes and it also has heme iron, the most bioavailable form of iron, which matters in CKD's anemia prone terrain. And if you know anybody that's near dialysis, you'll notice that most of them suffer from anemia. So for Robert, we monitored labs closely. We emphasized real food, meat, steak, roast, ground beef, over those processed meats with phosphorus additives. Because phosphate additives can spike serum phosphate far more than whole foods. A bigger issue in advanced CKD. We balanced red meat with eggs and fish, kept potassium sources tailored to his labs, and used bulk of fats for satiety. Butter, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, along with animal fats like beef tallow and lard. Dialing down carbs in stage four requires medical supervision. Not because it's risky, but because it's a powerful therapeutic intervention. So we monitor pressure and adjust it or deprescribe meds as his numbers improved. Because you often see drops in blood pressure and blood sugar when you reduce carbs. Thankfully, with this dietary pattern, there will be adequate protein. Because protein set too low invites protein energy wasting or PEW, a powerful predictor of mortality in CKD. So we watch weight, albumin, appetite, and hand grip strength. Calories matter too, and starving your kidneys isn't therapy. We track the right endpoints, A1C, fasting glucose, microalbumin, estimated glomerular filtration rate trend, not just a single snapshot, blood pressure, and weight. A greater or equal than 30% drop in microalbumin is a meaningful improvement in kidney risk. That's the kind of movement we're after. After 12 weeks, Robert had dropped 22 pounds, blood pressure normalized, and A1C fell. His microalbumin decreased by 38%. His estimated glomerular filtration rate stabilized, no longer free falling in the wrong direction. At six months, he was stronger, working full shifts, and most importantly, not on dialysis. Was it the steak? Not by itself. It was the combination, pulling out sugar and refined starch right-sizing protein with high-quality sources, including red meat, and hitting the levers that actually injure kidneys. Things like hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, obesity, and hypertension. Multiple lines of evidence show low-carb strategies in diabetes can be safe in CKD and stabilize renal markers while improving metabolic health. Though long-term RCTs in stage four remain limited, but we have enough clinical experience and anecdotal evidence to give people hope. Robert didn't cure CKD. He changed his trajectory and stopped the progression of his disease. He learned that red meat used wisely can support a kidney-friendly strategy by preventing malnutrition and keeping him satisfied enough to actually stick to low-carb living, a dietary pattern that will likely keep him from ever needing dialysis in the future. Now, let me address two touchy questions respectfully and factually. Question one. Aren't nephrologists trained to say no meat, low protein forever? Nephrology guidelines have evolved. Today's consensus is individualized. Some are now recommending 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day in stages three through five, and are learning to never push metabolically unstable patients into very low protein diets. We want enough protein to prevent PEW especially in older adults. This is not low carb versus nephrology. It's precision nutrition aligned to the patient. Question two, do some nephrologists have financial ties to dialysis centers? In the US, some nephrologists hold joint venture ownership stakes with dialysis facilities. That's legal, disclosed, and debated for potential conflicts. It should be obvious that that's probably not the ideal model. Peer-reviewed analysis note both concerns and some potential benefits. The point here is not to accuse, it's to create awareness. It's to remind us all to center patient goals and the best current evidence, including nutrition, when dialysis isn't yet inevitable. So, can red meat help heal kidneys? Here's the honest patient first answer. What helps most? Removing the glycemic assault, sugar, starch, and processed food, and calming insulin and blood pressure, key drivers of CKD. That's where low carb earns its keep. What red meat contributes, highly bioavailable amino acids to preserve muscle and avoid PEW, and heme iron that can help correct anemia when used judiciously. 
Those are supportive to kidney outcomes because malnutrition and anemia worsen prognosis. Red meat isn't a kidney drug, but in the right dose and unprocessed form, it can be a useful part of a low-carb kidney strategy. What to watch? In stage four, track potassium, phosphorus, acid-based status, blood pressure, and diabetes meds. Partner with your nephrologist and renal dietitian. Don't do it your own way into trouble. Final word for my fellow clinicians. The dialysis countdown is not the only storyline for stage four. Supervised low-carb moderate protein care can stabilize or improve intermediate renal markers while delivering cardiometabolic wins and is supported by emerging trials and reviews. Your patient's dinner plate might be the cheapest new drug we have. Let's prescribe it. With the same precision, we use ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and SGLT2 inhibitors. Your patients deserve better, and they definitely deserve to hear from you that yes, you can restore your kidneys, and not just the internet doctor. And if this message gave you hope, share it with someone staring at a dialysis brochure. In the description, I'll leave guidelines on protein targets and CKD, the randomized low-carb diabetic kidney study, the home dialysis ownership analysis, and the Big Sugary Drinks CKD paper, so you can check the receipts yourself. Thank you for coming to my video, and I'll see you in the next one.